and welcome back to City Corner. Our second guest today is a local artist whose work will be exhibited at a new exhibit coming up in Benton Park. At this time, we'd like to welcome Don Morgan to City Corner. Don, thank you so much. Uh, your new work exhibit is called Art, Seen, and Found, and we're very excited about that coming to Benton Park, a truly historic area in St. Louis. Indeed. Yeah, we are so happy to show our work in Benton Park. We found Benton Park. We've all uh, been immigrants from other places in the country. Uh, the four artists came from uh, many different cities, and we uh, love Benton Park, so we started to look around Benton Park and saw subject matter for our art. So art seen and found is kind of a, a kind of neat way that you all came together and have this exhibit. Yeah, some of the artists see it and paint it, others find things and make stuff out of what they find. Nice. Well, you're a veteran photographer, and I understand you spent 25 years at a very prominent university in clinical psychology. It's true. I had a long career as a clinical psychologist, and I'm um, happy to have left uh, after 25 years to come to St. Louis to get married to a wonderful woman, my wife, Phyllis. So we built a house in Benton Park, and um, we've been finding the wonders of St. Louis. So you were at Rutgers for many years. I wanted to throw that in there. And it seems like a lot of the uh, you know, things you like to do are into the abstract. And is there, a, like, I wanted to ask you this because since you were a clinical psychologist for so many years, is there like a mental relationship between psychology and abstract paintings and photography? Well, I can tell you the, the relationship that came to me is that for a lot of years, I taught the Rorschach test. You remember the ink blots? Okay. <clears throat> There's a standard set of ink blots, <clears throat> and people are asked to look at them and tell you what they um, see. So uh, just for example, I have a series called the Rorschach series where I do things that are a little bit hard to figure out what they are. And people look at them and say, I see a woman holding... <clears throat> something and bent over and this happens to be um, ice in the marina outside where I used to live in Jersey City, New Jersey. Yes, yeah, Nick, because you see like it looks like a woman with like a, uh -huh. a sunflower head. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's what I see. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, re uh, the funny part is just um, that I wound up being interested in uh, abstract figures on the street that you can find. This is from when they fix cracks on the street with tar. And they make real interesting designs. Those tar fixing guys are like great artists. They can make things look <clears throat> pretty cool. Looks like a peace sign and looks like a Zeppelin. <laughs> looks like the Hindenburg. Right. You know, it's like hovering over the sky right there. Yeah, see, exactly. So it works, just like in the Rorschach test. You're telling me all the cool things that it looks like to you. Now, is this a part of the photos called the Panographs? Painting Graphs is a new series that I've been working on, and um, one of them is back there, and I can tell you about them. Here's a, here's a, a proof of three different ones. <clears throat> so these are big. They're about four feet by three feet, and they look like abstract art. When people come and see them, they say, you're a painter. And I'm like, no, I'm a photographer, but I like to steal these things from walls. These are from walls in Guatemala. Um, and this is, a, this is a, a telephone pole that somebody painted against a wall. And I just think they look beautiful. So I steal them and make them into pictures, and I've called them painting graphs. Well, wow, so I guess you can just use them, and people can kind of... One thing about art, when you're looking at that, it kind of soothes your soul. You know, when you get there, it's like watching a fish tank. You know, it's something where, uh -huh. you know, you can really uh, go deep into your mind. I, that's what I like from them. For example, the one back there, if, uh, if they can get a shot of that between us, um, it looks like a painting um, by a famous uh, abstract painter, but it's actually a concrete floor in a bathroom in Austin, Texas. So... Uh, you never know what you're going to see. But when you look at it, just like you say, Todd, you can kind of get lost in it and feel whatever feelings come up. So you got this huge event Sunday, April 23rd. Mm -hmm. Can you give us the, uh, 
a little bit of the information about that day because it, it looks like it's going to be held at a really neat place. It is. So, again, Benton Park is full of these cool places. Um, <clears throat> my friend Tim Tucker used to live in this place. It was called the Buggy Shop, and it's a beautiful space that um, Adnan Sabek bought, <clears throat> and he uses it as an event space. It's called Atelier 1879, which is when it was built. <clears throat> when it was built. And um, it's a beautiful event space. So the four of us will have our work hanging and people can walk in. It's got these big doors that open to the street. So it should be beautiful to just come in and check out all of our artwork. So it's an all day event starting at 11 a.m. And I understand there's kind of a cool little uh, reception later in the day. We, we all love food and wine. So <laughs> we're gonna have a, a from uh, six to seven, there'll be a poetry experience. Someone has written poems to the works. I want to talk about one of my other artist collaborators here, um, Lisa Collins. Lisa is another uh, person who's traveled all over the world, came here from New Zealand, and she, that's her book over there, uh, she does pictures of old buildings around St. Louis, among many things she does. But this is a new series called Love Me, Don't Leave Me. And Lisa, this is a, a pen and ink with watercolor, and it's just phenomenal. She's so good as a painter. And <clears throat> she's been finding buildings in, this is from North, uh, South Broadway, uh, down by Carondelet. Okay. Building that's been let go over many years. <clears throat> and we'd like to um, get the attention of some of the preservationist people around St. Louis who love these old buildings and want to see them preserved. It's kind of spooky. You got the, you know, like at the top, <laughs> there's a little bit of the roof. Yeah. But then you come down and it looks like a haunted house at the bottom right with the, uh, mm -hmm. with the figures of the young girls. Well, that's there. right. I, I'm glad you saw those, Todd, because Lisa puts in figures like in the windows and there's a cat and there's smoke coming out of here. She like re-inhabits the picture as though it were alive again with the ghosts of the past. It's a, it's a little spooky, but it's very sweet and beautiful to give the houses life again. So you got uh, three, I mean, that's Lisa. You also have Scott Bean, <clears throat> Phyllis Terry Friedman, and yourself. So would you like to talk a little bit about Scott and Phyllis? We got about four or five minutes left. Okay, good. Yes, so Phyllis, uh, my wife, happens to be a um, assemblage artist. And she likes to put together found objects out of wood, metal, uh, feathers. You know, Lord only knows whatever things she comes up with. This is um, copper leaf. This is a, a rare mineral of some kind that I don't remember the name of, but it's on our website. And um, beautiful woods, exotic woods that we find at St. Louis wood dealers. So Phyllis puts these together. And where do we find most of these things? at the Lemp Brewery at Regan's Junk Yard. Um, Regan Young has a, uh, an old recovered um, architectural elements yard at the Lemp Brewery. And this is like a big old washer that Phyllis found. And um, sometimes the wood comes from there. So she'll find things everywhere and put them together and make beautiful pieces out of them. You know what they say, one person's trash is another's treasure. Exactly, exactly. I mean, even if you look at City Museum, they've got stuff like that, you know, different like hubcaps and old bicycles mm -hmm. and just all kinds of things. What is it with the, uh, the trend of using, uh, not garbage, but, but trash and things that aren't used anymore uh, into these new, uh, you know, uh, exhibits? Yeah, it is a, a, um, a thing from St. Louis, going back to Bob Cassily, whom, whose work I got to know and some of the wonderful people um, that were his associates where they would make things and build things out of old St. Louis artifacts. So whether it's the bricks or the um, metal objects or the elements from buildings, putting them together big and little um, is just so cool. Now let's mention Scott Bean. He's the, uh, the last one. Right, so Scott is a um, lifelong artist, um, taught art in Minneapolis for many years and uh, he's a painter. So his works are, um, are uh, he sets up around Benton Park and has painted, you know, the Irish Tavern, Cafe Venice, um, a lot of beautiful places that, that you're seeing now on the, on the roll. Um, I, I love the way he paints. He has a sort of flat style that um, the colors are just beautiful. And his um, 
ability to render the twilight, the piece you're seeing now is Benton Park in that hour just when the sun has set and some of the lights come on. Um, it's that crack between the worlds he paints so beautifully. Well, St. Louis is a beautiful city. When you go back historically and look at the the bones and the architect of our of our homes from back the back of the day, I love the way it's being preserved. Um, you're also president of the Benton Park Neighborhood Association and vice chair of the city conflict resolution. What conflicts do you uh, resolve? Well, the the um, thank goodness I finished being president of Benton Park Neighborhood Association after four years. And that's um, a wonderful thing that I met so many great people through. Um, and I am on the board of the um, Conflict Resolution Center of the city of St. Louis. And that is a wonderful organization that um, is available to do mediation between neighbors, between city employees and the administration, and between the police and citizens when it is needed. Um, and you can find out more about that on their website. Well, you seem to have that calming demeanor about yourself that you could uh, resolve conflicts. And, you know, and being an artist like that, uh, you know, I'm sure it's fun to, you know, to mediate and, and bring people together because that's what we're going to be doing at Art, Seen, and Found, Sunday, April 23rd from 11 to 7, and the Wine and Cheese Reception from 6 to 7. And do you have to have a reservation? Nope, just wander in and hang out. Um, there'll be other events going on during the day that might be fun too. Okay, in 30 seconds, uh, anything else you'd like to mention? We love Benton Park. We love the city. We are all committed to trying to help things here now that we are residents, and um, we, we look forward to seeing people at this. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us on City Corner, and we'll see you out there on April 23rd, 11 to 7, and from 6 to 7 will be the Wine and Cheese Reception. Well, thank you, Don Morgan, for joining us here on City Corner. We'd like to thank Kevin East, you know, the first African-American vessel captain in the state of Missouri. And we'd like to thank you for watching City Corner on STL TV, Experience St. Louis.